Hey gang, we're going to do a real quick video here about uh, fire tetrahedron. No matter which class you might be in, whether it's uh, introduction to fire prevention, fire protection systems, or fire behavior and combustion, uh, actually almost every class we're going to touch on the whole uh, topic of the fire triangle. What, what causes fire to happen? Uh, what's the scientific chemical uh, ca capacity of fire and all of the things that are involved in that? Because understanding it helps us deal with it, helps us extinguish it uh, in one of the many manners that we can. So uh, you might be taking this uh, video, watching this video, in any one of those courses. So um, it's really, really easy to misunderstand the fire tetrahedron. So let's first go back and just make sure we understand. The fire triangle is a commonly used uh, learning tool because it's easy to understand and it helps us understand uh, with the clear concepts that it provides how this chemical reaction we call fire or also known as combustion happens. And we know that we've got the oxygen leg, the heat leg, and the fuel leg. Now these days uh, you might hear in some classes because scientists have been trying to get us to change a little bit of our terminology to be more scientific. You might see energy here instead of heat. And you might see oxidizer here instead of oxygen because there are some products that even in a uh, environment where there's no oxygen in the air, the oxidizer products, uh, chemicals, can um, provide adequate oxygen. Like in our flammable metals, they have oxygen in them and uh, uh, water doesn't put them out, um, uh, you know, we're going to have to use some kind of a class D product. So, um, you know, it's common that we have these other terms as well. Now, the three legs of the fire triangle of heat, oxygen, and fuel, they provide us a guide to help us realize that to extinguish a fire, we need to remove or reduce adequately, like if we can reduce the heat enough, we don't have to reduce all the heat, but we reduce the heat enough, we stop the chain reaction or we remove enough oxygen where we stop the chain reaction. But uh, either removing it or removing it adequately, uh, we can remove that one leg of the reaction of heat, fuel, and oxygen working together. And it's important that we understand all three need to be there for fire or combustion to happen. So if you can just picture in your mind a three-legged stool, uh, we don't see those around very much anymore, um, but the, you know, they used to be uh, used, uh, you know, at a counter or whatever. But a three-legged stool is one that, um, is dependent on each leg. And if you just remove one leg, that stool's going to fall over, right? Anybody that sits on it, if one leg's kind of broken a little bit, they sit up, boom, they're on the ground, uh, on their can, everybody laughing at them. Well, this is the same with fire. All you got to do is remove one leg. Now, a lot of times we attack all the legs or two of the legs, but it only requires removing one leg. So choosing which leg to attack is a choice of convenience, economics, and effectiveness. So most of the time, what do we use? We use water because it's less expensive. It's very effective in cooling the fire and the fuels. And it's, for the most part, readily available. Now, while the um, uh, fire triangle is pretty easy to comprehend, uh, it's very easy to misunderstand or miscomprehend the fire tetrahedron. So um, a lot of students in some of the projects that they do in my class uh, think that um, 
halon or another product smother fire and take away the oxygen. They don't. CO2 does that. But um, so to understand how these kind of fire protection systems work, we need to understand the fire tetrahedron. So we think of the tetrahedron, we're thinking more in the realm of chemistry and the way the elements of heat, fuel, and oxygen bind to one another and create this ongoing self-sustaining reaction. When the three work together and you get the chemical reaction of fuel, the heat is heating up the other fuel to prepare it to burn. The fuels that are next to it are heating up to their ignition temperature and it's entrailing the oxygen as the heat is rising, it's drawing in oxygen towards the base and in and gets that ongoing self-sustaining reaction. We call that chain reaction that we, we've added the tetrahedron uh, image to help us understand that there's got to be that sufficient heat which causes the fuel and the oxygen to form free radicals and initiate that self-sustained chemical reaction. So now I've always taught that the fire tetrahedron is a concept that is a concern to firefighters only when dealing with fire protection systems. And we need to understand that. We are not going to use the kind of products that attack the chain reaction out there on a wildland fire or in most residential fires and even most commercial fires. It's, it's something that is used in fire protection systems related to technology and electronically based systems like server rooms, computerized weapon systems uh, on ships, control towers at airports, even jet engines or rocket systems sometimes even have their own fire protection. Though many of these systems will also displace oxygen, thus removing one of the legs of the reaction, they're actually binding to the free radicals of that reaction and blocking their connectivity. So in this case, you can have adequate fuel, adequate heat, and adequate oxygen still in place, but the fire won't happen. I'm going to attach a YouTube video uh, to the same page that this video will be on where you can see in a air control tower, an air, airport control tower, where after the inert agent that they used at that time, or halon, I forget, um, but they keep trying to light matches or lighters and they go out because it won't allow the chain reaction to happen. So if you've taken EMT, you've been taught that carbon monoxide poisoning is the result of carbon monoxide being breathed into the lungs where it attaches to the red blood cells. Now this results in oxygen being blocked from attaching to those same blood cells, which if it happens enough can cause illness, headache, nausea, confusion. So the blood cells get CO attached to it, which blocks oxygen from attaching to it. Well, this is kind of the same thing that's happening. Halon and halogenated agents do the same thing to a fire. They block the free radicals from attaching to one another. So here's what it says in the textbook for the fire protection uh, systems course. Scientists and researchers realized that certain extinguishing agents were effective against fires, but in a manner that seemed to defy the rules. All three legs of the fire remained, yet the fire went out. There was no appreciable cooling effect. There was sufficient fuel present, and there was still adequate oxygen to support combustion. So the question repeatedly asked was, why did the fire go out? With time and research, the conclusion reached by scientists and researchers was that the application of certain extinguishing agents like halons, halogens, and some inert agents interrupted the chemical reaction and interfered with its ability to self-sustain. 
Now, while the fire triangle depicts the three elements needed to start a fire, the fire tetrahedron depicts fire's nature as an uninhibited chemical or self-sustaining chain reaction once ignition occurs. So when we're talking about taking away this fourth leg, we're talking about blocking the chain reaction with gases. So, um, you know, look at your chart um, here and re read through this. Um, it's This is a really good version of the chart, but there's a chart in most of your textbooks similar to this. So um, the four elements that are, I'm sorry, I changed too soon. In there is oxygen to sustain, sufficient heat to raise the material to its ignition temperature, fuel or combustible material, that's our fire triangle, and now an exothermic chemical chain reaction in the material. So each of the four sides of the tetrahedron symbolize that fuel, heat, oxygen, and chemical chain reaction. Theoretically, fire extinguishers put out fire by taking one or more of the elements of the fire tetrahedron. So uh, this model, it's simplistic, but it's still uh, a good analogy as to the theory of how to extinguish a fire. The, that model uh, uh, of, of the tetrahedron. So a foam extinguisher creates a barrier around the combustible materials and cuts off the supply of oxygen. A water extinguisher is going to lower the temperature below the ignition point. Or for a flammable liquid fire, it would remove or divert the fuel. Uh, a, a flammable liquid fire, we would use not water, but a, uh, a class K or a class B but it's going to remove or divert the fuel or cover it, um, interfering with the chemical chain reaction. Oh, I'm sorry. So if we're using a, a um, something that attacks the tetrahedron, it's a gas that interferes with the chemical uh, chain reaction. So it, it mops up those free radicals in that chemical reaction using um, BCF or other halon extinguishers, which also creates an inert gas barrier. So that's what's going on. With halon and other light gases, they fill the room. So contrary to popular belief, halon does not remove the oxygen. CO2 does and some of our other gases we might use, but it reacts with the elements of the fire. So when the halon is discharged, it breaks the chemical chain reaction. This accounts for most of its firefighting properties. The other properties come from a cooling effect. And so um, we actually do um, get some uh, benefit from the CO2 is often used to push the halon into the room. So, uh, you know, this is just different pictures of a halon release, um, but it, uh, the CO2 is going to have a cooling effect and a choking effect, but the halon itself breaks the chain reaction. So when we use these gases, we do no damage to all of this computer equipment that might be in a server room or whatever. And this stuff is really expensive, the equipment. And so Halon is actually really expensive. We're not gonna use it unless we're protecting these types of facilities. So, um, uh, that's a little bit of background on understanding the fire tetrahedron and understanding halon better. Uh, I'm sorry if it got a little confusing in there or too technical, but hopefully this helps you understand how these products work and how the tetrahedron works. Okay. Thanks a lot for listening. And uh, I'm also going to include a text version of this for those of you who would rather read than watch. I should have told you at the beginning.